Okay, brothers and sisters, so we're going to go into a much needed and timely lesson. As we just seen, you know, on those news updates that there's an there's a implication against the children of Israel and the things that we say and speak. So more than ever, it's a time now where we need to be loyal to one another. So the title of the lesson is No Loyalty, No Royalty. So I'm going to go into the commentary and we're going to go right into the scriptures. So the world is becoming increasingly wicked and lacks a sense of unity for things of a righteous manner. There are many that will unite to riot in the streets. There are many that will unite to commit sin. Loyalty to the brethren in Christ, however, seems to become very difficult for many due to the adversary finding ways to allure us to unify with those who desire to sin. Loyalty to the brethren is a key component for those who hope to make it through this wicked time ahead. Let's look at the scriptures to attain a better understanding on what we must remember to walk with loyalty in these last days. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So this is what the scripture says. It says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. But we have to understand who Christ was speaking of when he said, I send you to as sheep in the midst of wolves. Go ahead, keep reading. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents. And harmless as doves. So you have to have a level of temperance. Knowing how to deal with the word and how to deal with people that we were sent to in general. Read. But beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils. To councils, right? Read. And they will scourge you, scourge, you. scourge you in their synagogues. In their churches, in their synagogues. Read. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Come on. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall say, shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour which you shall speak. Read. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. It's the Holy Spirit. Come on. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. So the brother shall deliver up brother to death. Read. And the father the child. Read. And the child shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So you must understand that to walk in the doctrine of Christ means that ultimately you will be more likely to be betrayed even, even those who you hold near and dear in this world. Like you got to understand like being in Christ is a responsibility. It's not something for what you would call in this world the, the spiritually weak or the faint of heart. You have to be strong and endure with walking in Christ and know that in Christ, betrayal is part of it. You understand? The greatest Israelite to ever walk this earth who was Christ was betrayed. So you can't avoid something that our our <laughs> our savior who was the forerunner for all this went through you can't avoid what christ went through it's like when betrayal comes that's when people fall to pieces oh man i'm betrayed this should have never happened especially here or the no you have to understand we're, we're no greater than our master right so it says truth causes offenses and the doctrine of Christ shines light on the sins of others, causing those that side with Satan in the spirit to be at variance with you. This is one of the biggest problems that came forth to cause disloyalty, right? 
So remember, we're talking about disloyalty within crisis time and what he dealt with, right? Because loyalty is royalty. Those that are loyal and can stick together understand what this kingdom is to come because that's a kingdom in total unity, okay? Now watch this. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Let's get it. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword. Read. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against his mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Exactly. Read. And see, this is the struggle we get when we're in the truth. We come in the truth and we're trying to figure out why it's so hard, you understand, to, to get those that we love in the truth. Well, listen, Christ said he come not to bring peace, but a sword. He told us it would be like that. Okay? It's those that want to do the will of the Father. That's why, you know, these things that we have as far as the carnal mind and dealing with things within the flesh is really our downfall. Okay? Because we'll be like, oh, man, listen. And we understand having a sense of family because that's what the church teach. We stress family. But I can't stress condoning wickedness. That got to be above stressing what you would call family. Okay? Righteousness is above all. Right? Come on. Matthew 10 and 36. Read. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Of his own household. Come on. He that love a father or mother more than he is not worthy of me. Mm. And he that love a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So that's the bottom line. Like, and this is why we say even when it comes to, you know, somebody looking at somebody or dealing with a mate situation, they got to love the most high. If you have two people committed to the most high, it'll work. You have two people that are not committed to the father and they're sin in the midst, it's not going to work. See, that's how you could tell whether something is right or wrong because when it's, when, it's, when it's a connection to the most high, it's pure. And that's in every situation. A friend within the church, a brother, a sister. That friend is going to last forever if they're connected to the most high. Okay. Read. Matthew 10 and 38. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Mm. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Read. And he that loses his life. For my sake shall find it. Exactly, because now we got to understand the things that, in the way we used to operate. I operate because I need, you know, to get these people and friends around me. I need this around me, or I've always had this, I've always had that. We always say when you come in the, in the truth, you got to get comfortable with getting uncomfortable and doing the things that you've never done before. And experiencing new experiences within Christ and walk in his way. So we must stay loyal to the father's mission, regardless of family and friends, regardless. Because at the end, we're going to have to face a judge. OK, we must also stay loyal to those within the doctrine and stand with them throughout all adversity. Our old lives should never tempt us to the point where we forget our purpose and lose ourselves as well as the body of Christ. We all suffer temptation at one time or another, but loyalty must remain intact. That, that point is, is just so, is so key to drive home because you, I, and everybody else in this building, in worldwide, is going to go through struggles within the truth. But it's the love and loyalty that keep you together. Okay, that's the honor and in integrity that it takes to follow the most high. A sense of loyalty. Okay, 
this brother, this sister have labored. I have labored with them. I can't let all that labor go to waste because of a disagreement, because of variance, because Satan came in and tried to cause division. Okay? Let's get Hebrews 4 and 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. See that? So we must work to enter into that rest. So we must labor tirelessly. Okay? We got to understand our credit lies with that reward that comes with Christ. There's no credit on earth that's, that's worthy of what Christ is bringing. So we got to labor to enter into that rest. Read. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. That means falling short and saying, you know what? I've been laboring for X amount of years. I've been laboring for this time. I've been laboring for that time. I'm good. You understand? Like I'm not getting no type of recognition, no type of love. Listen, when that doesn't happen, you got to understand what you're laboring for. All those things come, recognition come, love come. But at the end of the day, the recognition in Christ is what's more, what's more, what's a greater recognition than anything else. Read Hebrews 4 and 12. Come on now. For the word of the most high is quick. Is what? Is quick. Is quick. And powerful. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. So that word cut is quick, it's powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Mm. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts. Of what? Is a discerner of the thoughts. You see what the word is? It's a discerner of thoughts. So, if, so if you're abiding in the scripture. See, this is why Christ could understand and perceive what the Pharisees were speaking or what they were thinking. The word is a discerner of, of thoughts. Okay? If, if you're astute and understood in the word, you'll know, okay, kind of to a certain degree where somebody's thinking. Like, I remember listening to a blog talk lesson and, and, and you know, a brother said a word. An elder automatically knew where he was. It was like astro something. An elder was like, okay, I know exactly. Where'd you, he was like, where did you hear that word? That's not the experience our, our forefathers dealt with when they said that they was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But see, when you're in the scriptures, you'll know where somebody, where they're going, where they're thinking. You'll be able to perceive and understand, okay, where's this conversation and this question and this thing, where's this leading to? Okay, hence, you'll be able to discern the spirit that's in the midst of that conversation. So what is it? It's, it's a discerner of thoughts and what? An intense of the heart. See what you intend to do. See, somebody can say, well, well, you know what? I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't say I hated my brother. And you know what? Listen, I see many times in counsel, the elder be like, listen, it, it, you didn't say it, but it's showing all over your face. It's saying and how you're saying it. Intent is something that through the spirit of the most high is, is discernible. You can check that out, right? Come on. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, mm. but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So the word goes down to the very core of all thoughts and causes offenses because the darkness hates the light. The sword that, that Christ has set forth that divides even family and friends is simply the truth of the father. Receiving the truth should never cause disloyalty. Okay? Even when it comes in the forms of correction. It should never cause disloyalty. 
It should never cause, I hate this brother, I, I don't like this, or, well, he's not this, or they're not this. He's not perfect. That's disloyal. Okay, because those words that are given are words that are going to help you going forward. Okay? Now, let's get some wisdom here. We're in the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 21 and verse 1. My son, has thou sinned? So it's a question, my son, has thou sinned? Read. Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. Mm. Flee from sins as from the face of a serpent. Come on. For if thou comest to near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slain the souls of men. Come on. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed read to terrify and do wrong will waste riches thus the house of poor men shall be made desolate proud men proud men shall be made desolate come on a prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches to the ears of the most high and his judgment cometh speedily come on he that hateth to be reproved in is in the way of sinners exactly he that hateth reproof is in the way of sinners. Read. But he that feareth the most high will repent from his heart. Exactly. Because when reproof come, the only person that don't like reproof is Satan. Okay? It's as simple as that. Anybody that can't take so, like levels of correction when it comes to the scriptures, like it says, he's in the way of the sinners. Read. Come on now. An elegant man is known far and near, but a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. Exactly. So look, it tell you there's two types. There's a, an eloquent man is known far and near. So somebody that's good with words, you know, he's a so people know that person. But it says a man of understanding knoweth when he slip. Okay, there's a difference when you have wisdom and you and you. You, you understand your limits and know, okay, you'll rein those conversations right back in. You'll mind what you're saying. You'll make sure that what you're saying is in the spirit of the most high. So correction is there to help us get things together before the judgment. And without it, we are lost. Sinners hate correction, but if you're a person of wisdom you will eventually receive correction and remain loyal to those who, who risk confrontation to save your, own save your own life from sin. And that's the thing, right? Because the person that's causing the confrontation, okay, is risking all that. The reward, the, 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 the friendship, the love that you had to make sure that you actually live Past that, 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 that confrontation that was set because of righteousness. Like, I want you to be better after this. Yeah, you might not like me because of what I'm saying, but don't, don't, don't worry about me as the person. Worry about the words in the scripture that's coming out. And deal with that. Okay? Understand that those things are to save us from the hellfire. And to make sure that we, as living souls, actually live through and past the judgment. Right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's get it. Love not the world. So love not the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Exactly. Because if the whole thing and the whole deal is us living life for a carnal nature, then the love of the Most High doesn't reside within us. If, it, if it's about, you know, the things that we dealt with formerly, and that's the thing, it's like there was nothing out there before anyway. So if it was all about that, then why come to Christ? Okay? Love not the world and the things in it. Right? Come on. For all that is in the world and the lust of the flesh 
And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's what's in, that's what's in the world. All those things are detractors and, and they're distractions and what's in the world. You go in the world, that's what it's all about. It's about lust this, I want this, this car this, this woman that, this life this. And a lot of that stuff isn't even reality. Okay? That was just like we had a, you know, we seen a brother, we was in Times Square, and he was a brother that won uh, one of these rap competitions, you know, on TV. You know where he was at? He was on the corner selling his CDs. Talking about something he needed, anything we could give him, whether it be $5 or whether it be $10. When somebody sees somebody, you'll see, you'll watch TV and think, man, like these people, they're making it. These people got it. They've been on TV. When in reality, Listen, this brother was panhandling on the corner. He had, listen, it wasn't even a goodly package CD. It was a CD with, with a black and white picture in some plastic, folded over. It, it would, I'm like, first of all, who gives CDs these days? He like, yo, yo, listen to my disc, man. Support the work, support the work. I'm like, and the brother was looking at him. He was like... He's like, brother, didn't you win a competition? But see, that's the pride of life. That's that lust that come in. Because somebody else may see that and think and have a dream and be like, I could be that cat. No. If you want to be that guy, you know where he's, you know where he's at? He's, he's up Times Square panhandling. So if that's what you want to ascribe to, that's what's out there. Okay. Understand that in the world is nothing, th there's nothing there. The riches come with Christ. Read. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. Exactly, because that little scenario, those scenarios go like the wind. That's like, that's, that's like a drop in a bucket. The world passeth away and the lust thereof. Come on. But he that doeth the will of the of the most high abideth forever. The work stands. Come on. Little children. Okay. It is the last time. And as we have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Exactly. Read. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Exactly. So it's not what we learned within the, the, you know, the so-called Christian church where we're looking for one man to come out the big boogeyman. Even at Christ's time, he said it was many antichrists. Okay, here's the definition of that. Anything that opposed the will of Christ is antichrist. Okay? A brother that tell you Christ is not the savior is antichrist. Okay, there's many of them. There's many of them in the world right now. So even as it was in the time of Christ, there are many antichrists that live now. Come on. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Now, do you see that? So where were they? So when you see people, sometimes that even come amongst us, and then all of a sudden, they leave the body to do what? To spread nonsense and to teach falsehoods. It's just like it says here in First John, they went out from us, but they were not, they were not of us. Even though they were amongst us at one point, it doesn't mean that they were part of us. Okay. Read. If they had been of us, if they had been of us, if they were part of us. Read. They would no doubt have continued with us. They'd still be here. But they went out. Do y'all see that? Read that again. 1 John 2 and 19. Come on now. They went out from us. So they were with us at one point. Read. But they were not of us. But it was approved by the spirit of the most high. They were not of us. 
Read. And if they had been of us, and if they had been with us, they would no doubt have continued with us. They would have stayed. Read. But they went out, and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Because when they go out, see, that's the thing. See, the end all be all, brothers and sisters, let, let, I need to give y'all some insight on some things. Even when a brother or sister is in a status where they're outside of the body, it's what they do when they're outside of the body to find out whether they're of us or not. That's why when we're like, listen, let them be. Because now they're out on their own. And now here goes the thing. Do they love the most high or do they not love the most high? Or does that space amongst the body bring in betrayal? Does it bring in disloyalty? Does it bring in those things? Because those things are only for a, 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 a time away from the body is only a certain period of time. Okay? Time, is, listen, it's just a healing process. But all in all, when somebody is separated or somebody goes out, it's like it says here, it says, no doubt, they would have continued with us, but they went out. That they might be made manifest that they were not, they were not all of us. So now when they're out of the way, that's where it become made manifest what status and where their spirit was. Okay? You get to know because then they're free to do what they want to do. They do what they want to do. And now you get to see if they were of the body or whether they weren't. It's, it says it is, it's about doing the will of the Father. And part of doing his will is staying together through all the struggles, just like he stayed faithful to us. Loyalty is highly important. And when disunion happens, understand, something which is not of the Father is, is manifesting itself. So when you see that disunion, you know Satan's there. He's in the midst. He's working. Okay? Because the most high is, is not the author of confusion. Okay? There's going to be loyalty in that midst. Right? 1 Corinthians 11 and 17. Let's get it. Now is this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Exactly. I praise you not. Listen, he says, I praise you not that you have come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Read. For first of all, when we come together in the church, I hear there be division among you and I departly to believe it. He said, I partly believe it. Come on. For there must be also. There what now? For there must be also. No, 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 no. Everything should be peaches and lollipops. For there must be also heresy there, among you. There must be heresies amongst you. Must be heresies amongst you. It must come. Anytime there's an issue or a grumbling within a body of Christ, you know, those that are made manifest, the first thing they look at is the leader. As if that's the reason why there's sin. Okay? Instead of looking at the situation in itself and isolating that situation and analyzing it for what it is. Anytime it's sin, people, just in, 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 in nature of being carnal, pass the buck or pass the responsibility. Oh, was it me? It was this, or it was that. But it says, the Bible tells you heresies must be amongst us. Why? That they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So you can see. Okay? You got to know that you know that you know that you know when the judgment comes that I trust you. That you trust me. That I could be in well behavior. That you could be in well behavior. That you can be in a setting where you just won't cause an offense. Where you won't be that one 
that's the highly emotional, you the target. Somebody say something to you, it's like, oh, man, boo, I'm offended. I said nothing. You good? So we have those things, those heresies, those, those, those have to be made manifest amongst us. It is a common theme throughout the Bible that we are to remain together throughout even the roughest times because the alternative is going back to the world to be amongst many that have given themselves over to their own covetedness. That's what's the option. Because once you leave, you know, so to speak, the body of Christ, all that's out there is the same things that we, we left, that we thought wasn't the move with coming in here. Do you understand? You go right back to the same thing. Money, women, and cars. What's the gain in that? Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without the siren to speak with him. Mm. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without the siren to speak with thee. Exactly. So they tried to start something with Christ. So look, man, look at Christ, man. He off. His mother and brothers in the crowd. And listen what it says, right? It says, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and brethren stood without desiring to speak with them. They didn't want to speak to Christ. So somebody noticed that and wanted to point that out. As if now there's a problem with Christ. Because his mother and brethren don't want to talk to him. See, I told you, you found that Christ. I told you. I told you something was wrong with him. Now look at this. Read. Matthew 12 and 48. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? See, to go back to the prior scripture, the word is a discerner of thoughts and intents. He knew what that question was about. So now Christ is he's, he's coming. With a stern rebuke. He's like, who's my mother and brethren? Who are you talking to? What you talking about? Sometimes, listen, some of these, some, sometimes some of these conversations that are had need to be, you know, not all the time because we should always have this fruit of the spirit, but sometimes they deserve a sharp rebuke. Like, what, 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 where, where is this going? No, this is straight foolishness. So this is one of those moments where we read in the scripture that Christ had. He understood the intent of where they were at. So he said, listen, who's my mother and, and who are my brethren? Verse 49. And he stretched out, he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and he, said. He said, said what? Behold, my mother and my brethren. He said, here they go. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Exactly. He shut them right down. See, they was coming in with all that. If he could treat his family that way, and they don't want to speak, no. Nah. He let them know real nice and clear, this is my mother, my sisters, and my brothers. Because this is what's going to stand forever. Okay, at the end of the day, we must stay loyal to those who have chosen the path of Christ. Because even in some families, there are those who would try to hinder the work. In many ways, because of their own rebelliousness against the truth. Christ was showing us that, in fact, a family in the spirit, which is more important even than our own relatives, who we love and hope will eventually come to the truth. It doesn't mean that we don't love our family. That's what it, see, that's the thing that we get misconstrued because people hear this and be like, well, they're teaching against the family. La ah. You must love your family. You must hold hope out for them. 
You must pray for them. You must be there for them when they need you. But at the end of the day, understand nothing is more important than, than the work. Anything that gets in the way of doing the work of the Most High is a stumbling block. And I must not digress to the stumbling block and have that be something that's holding me back from doing the will of my father. So this is the examples that Christ was given. Wasn't that Christ didn't love his mother and his brethren? He gave his life for all of us. But guess what? He sacrificed specifically for those that would do the will of the father. Okay. Let's get 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. Come on. No, it's good. It's good. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Read. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, mm. whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Exactly. Come on. For the body is not one member, but many. But many, many different, you know, gifts and talents and abilities are in one body of Christ. We're many. Read. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Mm. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Exactly. So if the whole body was an eye, meaning each position is in the church, is very important. From the person that cleaned the church all the way down to the person that's teaching. Because if everybody's a teacher, who's taking care of the administrative work? If everybody's a teacher... Then who's, and see, this is the thing. Some brothers and sisters need to understand, not everybody set out to be a teacher. That's not everybody's gift. Some people are not out to be a greeter. Some people are not set out to be a security officer, and so on and so forth. But everybody have their respective gift. And therefore, whatever you find to do within the body of Christ you do that with excellence. That's your contribution to the Most High. That's your service to the Father. Okay? You know how people, and this is the thing, we got to look and not look to envy when we look at other people to say, I wish this would happen, or I wish that would happen, or you should be more like this. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, that's a dangerous thing. Even, even, when, even when wives look at husbands and be like, you should be like this brother. You should be like Elder Ricard. You should be like that. No, he should be like him. The gifts that the Most High gave him is what he gave him. And he's part of the body. And what his cont contribution is, is good to the body. Same thing with the sisters. You can never look at a sister and say, you know what, sister, you need to be like this or be like that or be like this or be like that. She need to be the best herd that the Most High made her. And follow the path that the Father have for her. And the gifts that the Most High have for her. Everybody's gift is not the same. Come on. If the whole... Or hearing, where were the smelling? Mm. But now have the Most High set the members, every one of them in the body, as it have pleased him. And if they were all one member, were, where, where, where were the body? Come on. But now are they many members, yet but one body, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say, Without the hand, I have no need of thee. Exactly, because there's need for everybody. You understand? It's not, you, you can't say, well, okay, well, this is useless. Everything 
that works within the body of Christ is useful. Read. Nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Read. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessity. Are necessary. necessary. Exactly, because guess what? Even as much as I'm teaching the lesson, the person that set the chairs up and set the mics up is just as important. Because without setting the chairs and the mics up, I'm sitting here to teach to do without to do what? Now that that office and that job was just important as the teacher. And understand that, like for me, as I started to grow in the maturity of the most high, I started to realize. You know what, Amaf? You can't do everything. You, you, you have to be able to allow brothers and sisters to do more and to delegate more because one person can't do all the work, okay? You got to be in a position where you, you, you trust those members of the body. And see, this is what we're talking about, loyalty. See, the, the parables give us things that we can understand in the natural. Do you understand your feet trust your brain? They're not disjointed. When the brain sends a signal to the feet and say, and to the legs and say, put one foot in front of the other, there's a trust there that I'm going to send a signal and, and, that, and those legs are going to work and the legs are, are, you know, and the brain's like, okay, I'm not going to fall. There's trust there. And everything that, that is in there is needed. The toes are needed for balance. But that's how the body of Christ should work. And notice that even if, if the parable is about the body and it's about trust, that's the same way that this body should operate. So there is no church that's successful under Christ without trust and loyalty. It's no such thing. Okay, read. 1 Corinthians 12 and 23. Read it. And those members of the body, which we speak to be less honorable, upon these will bestow more ab abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. That's that, that, the work that, that is unseen is the best work in the body of Christ. The work that's not before these cameras in a YouTube or before you, the work that it takes to put to put to put a holy day together. To set chairs and tables and to serve and to make sure that the Father's holy day is what it is, that work is more calmly than anything that is recognized. That's what really has governs and really you know, helps the church in, in its function on a day-to-day -day basis. Read. For our comely parts have no need, but the Most High have tempted the body, have temp tempered Temper. the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Come on. That there should be no more schisms yep. in the body. Read but that the members should have the same care one for another. So there should be no variances within the body because we all function together to make it progress forward. There is not one part of our physical bodies that is not connected to work in unison with the others. There, there also should be that same understanding amongst the body of Christ, that we're all important, and that each member helps the body progress if we, if we are together in righteousness. Let's get Zephaniah 2.1. Come on. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. Read. Before the decree, bring forth, before the day passed at the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Most High come upon you. Come on. Before the day of the Most High, anger come upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek, of the earth, Read. which have worth his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, 
it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the most high's anger. So we we must seek righteousness and gather together as commanded if we hope to avoid the fierce anger of the father. Time is short and loyalty be be with it says and loyalty must be with us because if we can't be loyal to our earthly brethren that we see every day, we will not be loyal to the father who we can't see. It's going to be the same situation from earth to glory. If we can't, if we can't deal and be loyal to those in whom the Most High entrusted now and, and constantly look at each other and be skeptical of one another, now we're going to be skeptical of the Father when he comes. Okay? It's going to be one of those thoughts. Wait, hold up. You know, maybe Independence Day was right. Maybe that maybe we should blow that ship that's coming out of the sky down. I don't I don't know. The same things these now, this what you're doing now is really perfecting what's to come. So if you don't perfect it now, what's on earth, when the heavenly realm comes to earth, you're just gonna be doing the same things you're doing now that you was then. Or then, what you're doing now. Let's go to 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 2. Which 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 44. So, like so I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? What are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put, all, put on immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned and receive psalms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them, and giveth them psalms in their hands? And he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, mm. whom they have confessed in the world. Mm. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Most High. So there are few standing for the Most High's name, in this world and confessing it. There's very few. I'm going to tell you, it's, it's brothers and sisters, very few. And the minute that you walk and you leave this doctrine, the first thing that you're, you're introduced, again, is another name. We know it by brothers that have, have left. They're no longer calling on the name of Ahiah. It'd be some, something else. It might, be, it might be Hebrew, but it's wrong Hebrew. But there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a reward for those who stand stiffly for the name of the Most High. There will, however, be a remnant who stood for the truth of the Father together and will be honored together at the very end. We must stay united if we hope to see that time. Let's get Jude, chapter 1, verse 17. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Yeshua Christ. Come on. How they that told you there should be mockers on the, in the last time. So that's one of the signs of the last time anyway. That there would be mockers that would come out. And, and listen, they'd be like, oh, man, you know, these cats are crazy or these brothers and sisters are crazy. That ain't the name of the most high. Look at these, look at these brothers and sisters. That's a prophecy that mockers would come out. Read. Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts? Exactly, because when you go down to the, to the bottom of it, you know, a lot of times there are you know, unsavory agendas that come with that and come with that spirit. Read. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. See, these are they that separate themselves. Okay, because it's always this isolated group over here or this isolated thing over here because of something that they wanted to do. What, what were they sensual about? Power. 
You understand? A lot, a, a lot of people, the love of many that wax cold, a lot of people, that love is wax cold just because somebody might have wanted to be in, in authority and didn't want to wait on their ministry. Didn't want to be approved in the spirit of the most high. Didn't want to honor and work up the ranks. And felt like, you know what? These I've gotten one academy lesson. And I, I've been in the academy. I don't need it no more. I, I done been through a year of teaching. I got baptized. Listen, now it's time. And you know what? I think the elders will hold me back. Instead of waiting on your ministry, as the scriptures say. You know, something hit me, and this is something that that is is is, is real dear to me. And some, you know, something that I got out of out of our elders meeting. Because I was called at one point to be a deacon. Then called to be an elder. And yeah, brothers ordained and, and, and all that. But it was something about the meeting we had and the laying on of hands. That was different. It was just different. And it's, it's, it's like you have to understand, right? When I gave the example last night, I would have been fine if the elders laid hands and said, listen, you've done a great service. Your officer of mine. Okay. I'm, I'm going to still do the work. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, all these things that we're reading, all these things that we're dealing with, we got to stay together in honor no matter what. Whether things you feel go your way, whether things you feel don't go your way, but if you're working in the vineyard, and it's supposed to be that, no matter what, it's going to be that regardless. I remember so many times just being in the church that as we were growing, there were checkpoints. Okay? I remember a time when, when, when elders came and, and hey, you, 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 not, you got to rethink leadership. Okay? Those that were approved stayed. Those that weren't couldn't handle it. They went another way. Those that were in the spirit of the most high understood what it was to serve. See, this is the thing. If, if, if a calling is sure, it's going to be sure regardless. No matter how many ebbs and flows you go through it, if it's real, it's going to stand. And you must be proven through all that. See, that's what these, these scriptures are saying here. It's talking about, it says, but they who separate themselves sensual have it not the spirit. Because the spirit give you longevity. The spirit give you temperance. The spirit give you, the, give you that spirit. It, it, it's, it is a spirit of endurance. Read. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. See, it says building up a holy faith. Okay, the beloved, they build up a holy faith. Knowing and understanding the things they've been through, the trials they've been through. And how to persevere through the issues. Come on. Praying in the Holy, holy Spirit. Come on. Keeping yourselves in the love of the most high. Looking for the mercy of the Lord Yeshua Christ without eternal life. So 
I can't say it any better than what the commentaries say, so I'm going to read it the way the commentary is. Separation is not in the spirit, period. Anytime, like, you, you know, I, I, you know, I, let me do this, or I don't know, and no. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, except from the world, where it says you must separate from your brothers and sisters in righteousness. That's where the spirit of the Most High is. That's where the safety is. That's where the accountability is. Okay? Soon, whether we like it or not, we will be forced to, to get over our offenses or suffer destruction alone. The carnal will only have loyalty to themselves when all the chaos prophesy comes to its fullness. That's the truth. Okay? Because keep in mind, if, if there's a spirit of separation now, when the mark of the beast is instituted, okay, you weren't really immersed into, you know, being loyal to a group of brothers and sisters. When that comes, you're going to be out for self anyway. So taking a mark and being out for self is just something that you've always done. <laughs> you just never took the mark yet. Let's go to Philippians 2 and 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, read, if any confront of love, comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, mm. if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, but ye be lack-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Mm. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. So let nothing be done through something begrudging or a strife or an argument. Okay, well, look, I'm just going to do it. Or vain glory. Yeah, I'm going to do this in excellence. They going to know whose name is on this. Don't nobody, don't nobody set up a church like I do. They going to know they going to know who did this. Nothing is to be done through strife or vainglory. Read, but in loneliness of mind, let every esteem other better than themselves. Exactly. Because technically, like when it was a humbling thing. You understand when I when I looked, I looked at the video that that was posted from last week's service and I was like man I was like I got to do a better job <laughs> like the, the, the spirit was on these men you understand and just just to see it you have to understand like and I've always said this no matter who's in this seat the most high gonna work with them It doesn't matter. See, that's why you can't respect the person. You got to understand. You have to honor the spirit of the most high. You understand? <laughs> but when one person got up, next person came in, and I wasn't, that why I, I wasn't even worried. I was expecting the, the spirit of the most high to flow. That's why I ain't, I ain't call. I, listen, I was good. I ain't talked to these brothers a couple days later. Like, I was good. Because I know that th the spirit of the most high is here. Y'all been taught better than that. And y'all know how to operate within that spirit. You understand? And that's how it should be. One roll, the next one step up and do the, do, do the work because we're one body. That's how the spirit work. Go ahead. Look not every man on his own things, mm. but every man also on the things of others. Exactly, because there's always something that we can do better by using the others that are in righteousness as examples. 
Okay, I could do better with that. This I could do better. That's the only way you grow. Nobody can sit there and say, you know what? Well, I'm the best at what I do, and there's no better than I. No, there's always something that you can do better. I went into that meeting just learning. What could I do better? What, how more attentive can I be? How more organized can I be? We always got to learn. Okay? Everybody's still in a, in a learning process until we, we see the ultimate teacher, who's Christ. And then everything be fulfilled. Everything be taught. But we have to understand that all of us, there's elements as we're growing within the spirit of the most high that we're learning as we go. Right? Come on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yeshua Christ, mm. who being in the form of the most high, though it not rob robbery to be equal with the most high. Exactly. Why? Because he understood he was in the same spirit as his father. So he thought it not to be robbery to be equal with his father. Why? Because they were one. He was in the same mind. You understand? When somebody boldly, when somebody's, you know, ordained to do something or somebody's entrusted to do something, it shouldn't be a spirit of fear. You come up here, you got to teach. You got to do what you got to do. Because you got to understand you and that person, they're one. That whole spirit comes straight from that per straight from Christ, straight back to the Father. We're all one. Read. But made himself of no reputation, reputu reputation, and took upon him the former of a servant, and was made of likeness of men. Mm. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and began, began obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Mm. Wherefore, the Most High also have highly exalted him. Let me go into the commentary. Oh, okay. So Christ stayed loyal to the Father, having given up dominion in heaven to come down. It says, to be betrayed by his own people and killed for the work. The loyalty, are, the loyalty we're asked to keep is nowhere close in comparison. Yet we forget his example that was set to correct us. Let's get Colossians 3 and 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of the Most High, holy and beloved, bowels and mercy, kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Exactly. So these are the characteristics that we should put on lowliness and kindness and humbleness and meekness and long suffering like we we should understand that there's going to be growing pains with us being together there's going to be disagreements with us being together but the spirit of the most high have us go through long suffering and have us enduring one another and have us looking past those inconsistencies and focusing on what's right and what's good out of that person. Read. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And doing what? And forgiving one another. And forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Why? If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So that's a bottom line. So if you got a quarrel with a brother or a sister, you must forgive like Christ forgave. Not with any conditions, not with any, any stipulations. If you forgive, it has to be like they never did it. That's true forgiveness. There's no such thing as forgiveness and I'm not operating in the spirit before, like I was before you transgress. No. If I say I forgive, it's like it never happened. If I say it's over with, it should be over. 
No remembrance of sin. That's what's in Ezekiel 18. When you read Ezekiel 18, it tell you, and the wicked should turn from his wickedness and do righteousness. None of that which he done will be brought in the day of judgment. So the most high, the way he forgive is, listen, it's not even going to be mentioned. I'm not even holding that against you. So for us to be servants of Christ, true servants of Christ, because the ta- time is coming now is that true worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. If we're going to be true to the most high and like Christ, we have to be in the same mindset as Christ. Okay. Imagine some of the same brethren and sisters that were opposed to Christ were able to receive the spirit that was sent from the heavens, the Holy Spirit on Acts, the ones that crucified him. He wasn't holding the crucifixion against him and saying, you know what? Yeah, I'll give you the spirit, but you, you, you know what? You're going to be cursed and vexed through having the spirit of the most high because of this. No, they got a brand new beginning, clean slate. So if you truly say, listen, and that's for anybody, husband, wife, friends, brethren, all that, a brother, a sister, I forgive you. It got to be over with. Period. Like we dealt with Matthew 18 last night. It got to die. That's how we deal with issues. Okay, I remember many councils being with the elders and just saying at the end, okay, after this, we're not going to speak about this ever again, right? It's over with. And your, and your yay got to be yay, and your nay got to be nay. It's over with. Come on. Colossians 3 and 14. Read. And above all these things... Put on charity. Put on charity, which is love. Come on. Which is the bound of per- perfection. Of, of perfectness. Per- perfectness. Come on. And let the peace of the Most High rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Lack of forgiveness is another issue that causes disloyalty. Because, listen, you have to understand it's a disloyal spirit in itself. Because just say, I forgive my wife with conditions, right? And I'm like, okay, babe, I forgive you as long as you do this, this, and this, and that. Or as long as this, and this, and this, and that don't happen. Well, you can rest assured that if I got an alt with you, I'm going to forgive you with conditions too. And how could that person... How could that be a trustworthy, that, that's not a trustworthy vessel. Because every forgiveness is going to come with stipulations. Know what that means? You still got an evil eye towards your brother. So no matter what they do from that point forward, you're always watching them. You're, you're waiting for the next error. You're waiting for the next problem. You're waiting for the next fall. Okay? That's not Forgiveness. That's not how it works. Okay? So, a lack of forgiveness is another issue that causes disloyalty. We must be long-suffering and understand that even if you're right about a matter and don't forgive, you're still wrong. That's the truth. You could be dead right. But if you don't have the spirit of forgiveness, and that's what I was saying when we were talking about Matthew 18 and we were giving the example, you're supposed to go to your brother and your brother alone. If he hear thee, you've gained a brother. Okay? But if he neglect to hear you, you take two or three witnesses. But in that, if I get a witness and I'm saying, listen, this brother said so-and-so-and-so, 
And the witness say, well, I didn't hear it that way. Well, me, the accuser, I got to drop it. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And maybe now I got to look at the way that I'm looking at things because I'm looking at my brother with an evil eye because I'm the only one that's seen it that way. The witness didn't see it that way. I don't know how many times that happened and then I'll see a counsel and witnesses and all that turn on each other. And the witness, you know, the spirit of the most high come on them and they'll tell the truth like, nah, actually, when I think about it, it didn't happen that way. You know, it's like the air suck out the room. <gasps> you dare go against me? <laughs> We're not brothers no more. Oh, I see where you at. No, that is your brother. They telling the truth. You know, they recognizing that maybe, hey, this is a skewed situation. Maybe you're looking at it in the wrong light. When all that's in order is forgiveness. It's so easy to forgive. But in the flesh, it's so hard to do. It's just, it's, 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 it's an, it, to be, to hold the characteristics of the most high in Christ. It's hard to do those things when you're in the flesh. When, you ain't, when you're not in the spirit of the most high, none of those things can, can reside. And then how could we go and break bread and do the communion if we have no forgiveness? The Bible says you're drinking damnation unto yourself. You know, well, you can't even let a matter go. And, and the thing is, it'd be like days and years and weeks old. It's a new day. Nothing's bothering you now. Okay? But years and years and years, it's like, listen, it's over with. Move forward. Okay? Let's go to Jude 1 and 5. I will therefore put on, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Most High, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. That believed not, come on. And the angels were kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He have reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Exactly, read. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in a like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, mm. are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Read. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers, the foul the flesh, Despise dominion. So listen. So it says likewise. So it's now giving you an example of Sodom and Gomorrah or the fallen angels who left their first estate. You know what spirit dwelt with them? Disloyalty. The angels that left their first estate, they were disloyal to the power and father that created them. And the dominion and, and, and the zone that they had, they were disloyal. They were made to be eternal, to serve before the Father, a great glory and position. But disloyalty was set in their hearts. Okay? And they decided to follow Satan, the father of lies. And, and, and believe in that disloyal, that disloyalty. And now they're reserved to chains and everlasting darkness. But guess what? So also was those that followed that same pattern. Sodom and Gomorrah. Disloyal to the Most High. Sexually immoral. Going after strange flesh. Doing God knows what in Sodom. Also, like these folks, filthy dreamers that defile the flesh, that despise dominion, those that hate authority and dominion. 
As we say, on earth as it is in heaven, there's an order in earth, there's an order in heaven. So it's giving you the different examples of a spirit that would pass based on people's characteristics and what they get into. People that despise dominion, the same spirit that was in the fallen angels, that was in Satan, is in them. Okay? People that are filthy dreamers that defile the flesh, the same spirit that was in Sodom, is in them. And it all goes all the way back to the beginning. Who's the progenitor of that? Their father, Satan. That's why Christ could say with surety when he was speaking to the Pharisees, you're of your father, the devil. Because all that hatred and all that disloyalty and not following the father, he could see what spirit was operating. Satan himself. Like Elder God just said, he said, listen. He said, anything, whenever you see disagreements or you see separation, he said, I know what man is in here. And that's Lucifer. That's Satan. See, and you have to understand, you got to start to to be able to quantify and break things down that way and be able to see it. Like, no, no, no. This, this here, this ain't of the most high. Because this isn't bringing the joy, the peace, the long suffering. This, is, this, this isn't bringing this. This is Satan right here. It's either one spirit or the other. Come on. And speak evil of indignation. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Thirst not bring against him a railing accusation. Exactly, because even the righteous, Satan's job, always, he was always an accuser of the brethren. So whenever an accusation come, you know Satan's in the midst. That's why we focused on Matthew 18. Matter of fact, go there. Skip it. Go to, go to Matthew 18. Because it shows you how to identify the spirit of the fallen. It shows you how to identify Satan when he come to you. Matthew 18, 18. Like Elder said, if, 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 if somebody's speaking to you about another brother or sister, you're speaking to the devil himself. Watch this now, Matthew 18 and 18. Come on now. Verily I say unto you. Matter of fact, go up to 15. Matthew 18 and 15. Yeah, that's what I need. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Come on. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Oh, uh, how? How, how Go tell and him? tell him his fault between thee and him alone. No, you got to get something off your chest. Between thee and him alone. No, I, I'm just saying you need an opinion on how to go to him. Between thee and him alone. No, no, no. I'm saying I, I just don't know if I'm right or wrong in this matter. I don't know how to go to him. What Ma does it say? Matthew eighteen fifteen. Come on. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Mm. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. That's the correct way to do things. That's how things should be done. If not already, from the going forward, that's how every problem should be solved. And that's, that's including, hey, elder, I don't want to hear anything wrong about a brother or sister unless these things, these measures were met. Because I'm going to automatically know where the spirit is. You got a problem with a brother or sister? You're supposed to, in the spirit of the most high, most high go to him alone. And if they've heard you, you've gained a brother. Read. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more 
that in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Of two or three what? Of two or three witnesses. Two or three what? Two or three witnesses. Okay, you just can't bring some people here. And, oh, no, they're witnesses to this. And I'm talking about, if you have a, brother, a problem with a brother or sister, I'm talking about specifics. A specific situation. You can't say, okay, you offended me yesterday. And I'm going to bring some witnesses about a situation that happened two weeks ago that can attest that's your behavior. That's a false witness. And you have the problem with your brethren. You have the problem. Because two weeks ago, you should have did the first, the, the verse 15. You let it sit for two weeks. So you're incorrect in the spirit that you're bringing. So that should have been done first. So if that was the case and you were offended two weeks ago, then you should have, you should have went to your brother alone. And if they didn't hear you, now you bring two witnesses. You can't bring two witnesses to a situation about two weeks dealing with a situation that happened this week. I let you slide last week, but now you done slighted me. <laughs> See, the scripture doesn't support that. They have to be witnesses to that particular situation. Read. Matthew eighteen seventeen. Come on. And if he shall neglect to hear them. And if he'll neglect to hear the witnesses. Tell it unto the church. See, now it's a council. But see, here's the thing. If that witness that you bring forth, if we're coming and we're in council. And that witness say, and you're in a private setting, it's, it's those two or three witnesses before you even get to a situation. And you're like, listen, brother. I, 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 think you, I think you told me and my family to go to Sheol. And the witness is like, he didn't say that. He said, if brothers and sisters aren't listening, they go into Sheol. And you took offense to that. Then you got to understand, he, he, was, he didn't say what you said he said. You got to drop it. Because now you're reaching. You're looking for a reason to hate your brethren. Because you know why? Because you had something in your heart prior to that. You was just looking for a reason. So if it take a little bit for it to set you off, to make you blame and give an accusation to your brethren and hate them without a cause, then it shows something greater in you that was there prior to you saying you were offended. That's like the first thing when, you know, somebody come to you and they, brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, and you don't know, you know, elders are sitting back there like, I'm looking at a whole demon right now. I see what's operating. Because these scriptures here aren't being followed the way that Christ set them forth. Okay. Now, if he'll neglect to hear the two or three witnesses, read. Let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. And a publican. Okay. Now, he got to go or she got to go. Because we know what spirit now is residing within that situation. And like the Bible say, how could two walk lest they be agreed? Because I, I see the spirit here of disunion, of distrust, of disloyalty. See, that's how we can go back, read Jude 1 and 9 again. Go back to Jude 1 and 9. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Thirst not bring against him a railing accusation. Exactly, because it's like Satan. What you got against, what, what in the world did you got against Moses? What did he do to you? The only thing that Moses did against Satan was come against them evil spirits. 
that was in the earth and preach righteousness in the earth. Of course you're going to have a problem because you're in the darkness. But it's, the, it, it's those that are operating within darkness that bring disunion. Read. But said the Most High, rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Mm. But what they know naturally as brute beasts. As brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Exactly. Because see, sometimes those that are in the dark could be so blinded that it just throws the love that they had at one point for somebody out the window. And it's like, I used to rock with you, but I can't rock with you no more. That's disloyalty. That's the spirit of the fallen ones in full operation. Read. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. See, they've gone in the way of Cain. Why? Because they hate their brother. Okay, they devise in their mind, in their spirit, that no matter what this brother does to them is an offense and a violation and an issue. Listen, you understand, Abel was doing the will of his, he was doing righteousness. He was, he was giving a righteous offering to the father. Cain couldn't stand it. And you know what was crazy? Cain was giving an offering too. Nothing was accepted with that heart. Nothing was good. When you read that scripture, it said the Most High didn't respect his offering. Nobody's going to respect anything that's coming from somebody with hatred. That's in the heavenly realm. The Most High is not going to respect that. So as much praying, as much fasting, as much reading, as much that we can do, if our heart isn't right and we got hatred amongst our brethren, the Most High isn't accepting any of it. We got to get ourselves right with each other. Come on. First uh, Jude uh, 1 and 11. Read now. Woe unto them that they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perishing again saying of core. The spirit of disloyalty was first acted out in the heavens with the fallen angels. And we know how that will end. They're reserved in everlasting judgment and chains. We know how their end is. These examples are there to correct ourselves when we think to sin and are driven to do things like hate those that are over us in faith. The angels already did the same thing first. Let's get the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 20. Come on. So Abner came to David, to Her Heron, and 20 men with him. Mm. And David made Abner the man and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will rise and go. I will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make allegiance with thee, and that thou mayest renown, renown right. over right. all that thy heart desireth. Come on. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and J Jabo came from pursuing a troop and brought it a great spoil with them. But Adner was not with David and Haran, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the host that was with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he had sent him away. And he was gone in peace. And Joab came to the king and said, Come on. What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is that thou hast sent him away? And he is quite gone. Thou knowest Abner, the son of Ner, that he, can, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thou going out 
of thy coming in and to know all that thou doest. Mm. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers from Adner who brought him again from the will of Sarah. But David knew it not. And when Abner was returned to Haran, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly. Quietly. Come on. And smoke him there under the first, the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Azazel, the, Ashel. Ashel, his brother. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the most high forever from the blood of Adner, the son of Ner. Mm. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on his father's house, and let there not jail from the house of Joab one that have an issue, or that is a le leper, or that leaneth on a staff, or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So the disloyal and disobedient have always been cursed. How do you think we ended up in captivity? Nobody told him to kill his brother. They're supposed to work in peace. For whatever reason. You didn't, he didn't get that order. Then when, then, then when they, he's like, man, listen, nobody told you to do that. This sin is not on us. This is on you. And it's going to fall on you and your family for being disloyal and not following orders the way they were supposed to be followed. It says, we, we were disloyal to that father, and we fell and are still plagued with, with all the same manners of curses until this day. Let's get Leviticus. We in the law now. Chapter 19, verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tab as, as a, a tail bearer. As a tail bearer. Among thy people, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the most high. See, most people don't know that's a law. What is sin? Transgression of the law. So when you start, start speaking of somebody, okay, and you're not dealing with a matter with them alone, you become a tail bearer. You're breaking the law. No, 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 no. And see, this is the thing. If you want to remain clean and unblemished, when somebody brings another brother or sister to you, the best thing you could do, I don't want to hear it. I'm not bearing your iniquity. I'm straight. I'm straight. Because now, yo, I could go to Leviticus 19 and 16 and know that tail bearers are against the law. No, let me tell you about a situation, brother. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me air. No. That's against the laws of the Most High. Okay. You need to go to that brother. You need to go to that sister. And then the, the, the thing is this. Let's just say hypothetically, you go to a brother or sister, and that brother or sister that you go to directly, okay, is not hearing you. Well, you can't go and grab somebody to get an opinion about them not hearing you. Now all you're doing is spreading the issue from one person to the next. When they need, they didn't need to be infected at all. They didn't need to look at their brother or sister in a negative light at all. So we must understand the rules of the Most High. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. See that? Because listen, what's the spirit behind you telling somebody's business or telling an offense that you feel like is done to you to somebody that has nothing to do with it? What's the spirit behind that? It's evil. So now you want as many people to hate this brother or sister because you got something in your heart. Mm -hmm. 
So you trying to turn everybody around so that they'll look at this brother or sister the same way you do. Come on. If any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. That's another law. There should be no grudges amongst the children of Israel. That's violation of the laws of the Most High. So you can't sit there and harbor hate and anger towards somebody for a day, for months, for years. That's against the law. You must get over it. Forgive and move forward. Just as the Most High does with us. Imagine if the Most High harbor anger <laughs> towards us as we harbor anger towards each other. And he's like, okay, you repented for that, but you know what? All right, I remember it again. All right, I'm going to double chastise you. The Most High doesn't deal with us that way. We know we, we know we could get we'll get chastised for something we're doing in real time. Because the Most High, have, you know, the things we've repented for, He's already forgotten and forgave. Go in. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Most High. So we must consider ourselves. You don't want somebody to have a grudge against you. And if you're one of the people that be like, listen, it don't matter. They can walk past me every day. I never look their way. Wrong spirit. If you love your neighbor as yourself, it is impossible to be disloyal. You would hate, it says, you would hate for somebody to betray you so you wouldn't betray others. You would hate, you would despise that. Okay, let's go to James 5 and 7. Come on. Ye have lived in pleasure. Five or seven. Oh, be patient, therefore, brethren. That's right. So the first thing that it says here in 5 and 7 is patience. Be patient, brother. Read. Unto the coming of the Most High. Unto when? Unto the coming of the Most High. No, you must be patient till you're tired of somebody. Unto the coming of the Most High. No, no, no. I'm patient with you, you know, to a certain extent. You can't keep doing this. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Most High. Read. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth. And have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Come on. Be you also patient. Stabilize your, stabilize your hearts for the coming of the Most High draweth nigh. Read. Grudge not one against another, brethren. So it's, it's important, brothers and sisters, that we grudge not one against the other. In other words, with that tail bearing, that's what it does. If I tell you something about this sister that you had no idea about, guess what? Chances are you might not like it. And the, and the manipulative and evil spirit that comes with it, they, they'll, they'll look at, that spirit will look at your characteristic and know what you don't like. And bring that point out to them. So now that they're look when they look at you, they're looking at you with an evil eye too. Okay. So you know how you stop it? You just deal straight with the law. See, it says the scripture tell you if we we should meditate on the law day and night. So if I know that there's a law against tail bearing. And then I know sin is transgression of the law. So now when I see a tail bearer come my way, I don't want no parts. Because I'm not trying to deal with sin. Well, well, let, let me tell you, brother, what? Brother who? 
brother so-and-so ain't here. We're good. Conversation over. What's up with you? Nothing. I, but I'm trying to tell no, 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 no. I don't want to hear nothing. Here's what I want to hear. What's going on with you? Well, I really didn't have nothing to talk about. Okay, that's what it was about, huh? I guarantee you, if you would have fed in and we was talking about brother so-and-so, this conversation would have been two hours. But when we want to talk about what's going on with you, it's nothing to be said, huh? I don't know, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to do the best I can in the spirit of the most high. No, you're not. Let's talk about you and dealing with that heart you're dealing with. You said, brother so-and-so, what's up with you? It's like that should be a spiritual check moment. You hear somebody's name out somebody's mouth, okay, the first thing you should ask them, what's going on with you? What's up with that evil you trying to spread? I'm just saying, we can't have a casual conversation. No. Don't you know that every idle word you speak shall be brought up in the day of judgment? So what you trying to say to me and spread to me is death. Okay. Read. James 5 and 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, Least she be condemned. Mm. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Mm. Verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets. Take who, my brethren, the prophets. Come who on. have spoken in the name of the Most High for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Mm. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Which endure. We have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Most High that the most high is very pitiful and a tender mercy. Exactly. So we have to understand, right? Loyalty is definitely a characteristic in what's going to bring on royalty. There's no kingdom that stands that's against itself. There's no kingdom that... that it, 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 that's divided that actually moves forward. So if we don't have the same mind and the same judgment, we're doomed to fail. Okay? So we have to get into the spirit of operating. So when something is, is put in place, we got to follow. If something is, is if, if, if something is, New, that's just like now. I come back from a meeting, there's a whole lot of changes. But guess what? It's for the good. Because it's about the Most High being pleased with us. It's about the Most High accepting our worship and what we're doing. The worship and praise that went up today, it was different. It was, all like, it was different. Okay, in a more excellent way. But that's what would be in, in the order of the Most High. So put down your differences and look at what you have in common with the righteous and shun disloyalty, just like the Most High did and Christ did for us. All praise be to the Most High. Let's give him some... Wonderful and needed praise.